So, you're planning on doing the Everest Base Camp trek and you have no idea what kind of gear you'll need. That's okay, I'm here to help you cut through the noise. Now this is not going to be one of those rambling 30 minute what to pack videos. Based upon my own experience in Nepal, I'm going to run you through what you'll need quickly and with minimum fuss. Now you do need quite a bit of equipment and some of it can be expensive. Although you don't always need to buy the big brand name stuff. I certainly didn't and I enjoyed the trek just as much as the guy in the $300 soft shell jacket. But one area where I would recommend that you buy the best is undergarments. I cannot stress this point enough. Invest in Merino. It is definitely money well spent. Merino is just a great material. It wicks away moisture, it dries quickly when you wash it, and most importantly, it doesn't smell, which is great because you'll be wearing the same clothes for several days at a time. Anyway, enough about smelly underwear, let's get cracking. For the Everest Base Camp Trek, you'll basically need two bags. First, you'll need this kind, a duffel bag. You keep everything you have in this bag and then each morning you'll open it up, take out what you think you'll need for the day ahead, then you'll zip it back up and you give this to your porter who will carry it while you will have everything you need for the day in your day pack. This one's 40 litres although you could probably get away with a 25 or 30 litre bag. Now, the Everest Base Camp Trek is usually a 12 day trip, so you'll need quite a bit of clothing. First off, you'll need a waterproof and windproof jacket. You may also need some waterproof trousers. Next, you'll need a down jacket, which you can wear out on the trail and also in the tea houses late at night. A fleece jacket. Preferably a zip-up one as it's better for temperature regulation. Two long sleeve tops. A thick one that you can also sleep in and a thin one for wearing on the trail when it gets sunny. At least two t-shirts. So one you can wear and the other one you can wash. Remember merino is best as it doesn't smell. Two pairs of trekking pants. One with preferably zip-off legs as it can get hot sometimes on the trail and you might want to wear shorts. Two pairs of long thermal underpants, a thick one that you can sleep in and a thin one that you can wear on the trail. Two pairs of quick drying polyester or merino underwear, one to wear, one to wash. You really didn't think I was going to strip down to my underwear did you? Socks, two pairs for trekking and one thicker pair for sleeping. Now, when it comes to headwear, there are so many options available. But my personal preference was for one warm hat and one cap with a visor, which can be combined or supplemented with a buff, as it offers a range of combinations to protect you from both the sun and the dust. You'll also need some sunglasses and perhaps a backup pair in case you lose or break them. You'll also need two pairs of gloves one thin pair and one thicker pair for when it gets colder. Shit, I can't turn it off. You should also bring a headlamp for getting around the tea house at night and for that morning trek up to Kalapatar. Now you'll need a few toiletries but only take the essentials. Zinc or moisturising sun cream. It gets really sunny. Soap. A small microfiber towel. Lip balm. It's really dry and your lips will definitely crack. Hand sanitizer. Hydration. You need to drink a lot on the Everest Base Camp track, so you'll need something like a camelback. You can put two to three litres of water in this, slip it in your backpack and you can sip as you walk along. A flask or an algae of some kind, this is great, you can put hot or cold water in it, up to a litre. 
You can also use it as a hot water bottle. Slip it in your sleeping bag nice and warm. Now some people don't like to drink the water in the tea houses, so you can take some kind of filtration device along. This is a grail. It's really good. Basically, you put the water in there, then you push this down, filters it, take the lid off, drink it like that. Mm. Trekking poles. Now these were invaluable because you're walking several kilometers each day up and down. They help to take the strain off your knees when you're walking for 12 days solid. They really help. Some walking boots. These aren't the ones I used on the trek, but I bought them two years ago from Decathlon and they're the best pair of boots I've ever had. If I went again, I would definitely wear these. You may also need some micro spikes. Depending on what time of the year you go, there might be ice or snow on the trail. So you just hook these onto the bottom of your shoes and away you go. Some flip flops or trainers. At the end of a hard day on the trail, slip off your boots, put your flip-flops or trainers on, and your feet will feel great. They're also handy as backup in case your boots fail. Ziploc bags. These are invaluable. You buy a pack, five or six of these, you can put all your gear in them, and it helps you to organize your gear. You can write on there what's in each bag. It's very easy to find every morning. Swiss Army knife. Swiss Army knife, really useful. You can cut your nails, you can do all kinds of things with it. It's a Swiss Army knife, you know what it's for. The sleeping bag is also a good idea because although the tea houses provide blankets, it's nice to have an extra layer of warmth. A lining will help you to keep the inside of it clean. Now, you don't necessarily need a winter sleeping bag. I took only this summer one and it was plenty when combined with the blankets. Power bank. A large capacity one is better as you can charge your phone about six to seven times off one charge. Solar charger. You attach it to your backpack using carabiners and you've got a constant power source throughout the day. Small bag. You can put all your wires in here, you know where they are, you can find them very quickly. Camera and mobile phone. Camera for the better shots. Mobile phone as backup and for filming and you can also use it to keep in touch with people because there's Wi-Fi pretty much all the way up to base camp. Small tripod for those epic scenery shots. Medical kit. Inside you'll need at least three kinds of medicine. Painkillers, diarrhea medicine, Diamox for altitude sickness. You'll also need a few basic medical things like bandages and plasters blister tape for your toes and your heels. Believe me, prevention is better than the cure. Lozenges. I took two of these and it was the perfect amount. Toilet paper or tissues. The tea houses sell toilet paper but it gets more expensive as you get closer to base camp so take some with you. Playing cards. It can get a bit dull in the tea houses so you need something to do. Trail mix and snacks just to supplement your diet because the food in the tea houses can get a little bit boring. So that is a quick rundown of what you'll need for the Everest Base Camp trek. But the good thing about hiking in Nepal is that at some point you'll have to pass through Kathmandu. So if there's anything you forgot or couldn't get before you travel then you can always pick it up there at one of the dozens of shops that cater specifically to trekkers. So don't worry. Now, if after watching all this you still have questions about specific items or anything on my list, then please just drop them in the comments below and I'll get to them as fast as I can. In the meantime, please don't forget if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and click notifications if you'd like to watch my future videos. So that's it for today. Enjoy your trekking. Over and out.